This tea usually, um, because Afghanistan is a mixture of different cultures and different ethnic groups of people, usually indigenous people of Afghanistan, they are Pashtuns. And lots of other ethnic groups like Tajiks, Hazaras, Uzbeks and Baluchs, they all come from different, different uh, countries because Afghanistan is in the heart of the Asia and surrounding by different countries with the different cultures. They usually um, cross the border, the people they're living with the same culture, same language. So after World War II, my grand-grandparents flowed from Uzbekistan to Afghanistan. My father was two years old when they come to Afghanistan. So they grew up with a community, small community of Uzbeks. They crossed the Omu River and come to Afghanistan. He grew up there, he uh, started his study but it, it wasn't the high school over there at that time. He moved to Kabul and grew up there, studied and make a family. That's why I born in Kabul, capital city. So this tea comes from Uzbekistan. Usually they're making the goat milk and they have lots of goat over there. Goat milk, when they finish the tea with a small, nice touch up, they're putting a very fresh uh, uh, cream or maybe cheese from the goat very small touch on the top. Most people have their, um, mostly everyone have their, in their house. They have in the backyard a small outdoor kitchen and they have a clay tunnel. So they're using a wood fire and making different kind of uh, bread. And most important meal for the Afghani people is bread and rice. So every time they have with any meal, uh, they have bread um, that all the, on the sofa as well. So they have many kinds of breads. They have uh, Uzbek breads, they have um, Khasa breads, uh, they have Paraki breads, and we make samosas, we make fatir breads, a lot of different kinds of breads in the tunnel. And this one's Gosh Naan, we usually is very popular back home. Um, and I grew up with the um, different kind of cooking at home and the Tanor, my mom usually bake ba bread, and I always ask them, "Can you? Can I have some little bit dough?" And I always mix these things and make a, <laughs> make a fresh gosh bread. And I, I always try to make different things. Uh, from childhood, I had very good passion to making breads and cooking. So I grew up with the food, and we had a big garden with the vegetables and fruits and animals at home in the backyard. So yeah, that's why I love food and cooking. <laughs> yeah, and when I first, when I arrived to Australia, uh, uh, it was a big challenge for me to accept all different cultures and different peoples with the different religion. They all was uh, kind of challenging for me. When I tried to mix up with the people, um, I never thought it would be a very uh, interesting for me to meet new people with new cultures and. Uh, new foods was kind of very good, but uh, when uh, when I invite some people at the beginning to my house or when some years in somebody's house, they're asking me, do you want tea, coffee or water or something? And I said, why are they asking me? <laughs> because back home, we never ask guests when they are coming to a house, we never ask them, what do you want? So first we bring in, if this summer, we first bring in juice or water cold drink. And then after this finished, we will bring tea with the food, with the bread or some dry fruit. And after that, we definitely bring in food, plate of food. We never leave the guests without eating in our house. But it is kind of culture, not, not because of the uh, forcing people to eat. It's like kind of culture. We grew up with this culture. When I arrived to Australia, it, uh, it was a little bit strange for me. Why are they asking me? Do you want coffee or juice or tea? And somebody come to my house. My husband forced me to ask them, do you want coffee, uh, juice? And I said, no, how can I ask them? I want to bring it on the table straight. He said, no, he is not taking straight away to the guest. You have to ask them. And, and for the first, uh, first uh, month or so, it was a little bit kind of difficult and strange to ask people what do you want. And slowly, slowly, I learned. And sometimes when I went to parties, it says, um, share a plate. 
And I said, why do they want to ask me to share a plate? And then later I, I find out, oh, everybody goes to the party, they want to share a plate, they're just bringing some food. But usually up north people, Afghanistan north people, they are very famous, famous with their hospitality. And usually when they're going to somebody's house, they're not going empty handed. They're always taking something to eat with them to share. Back home, we usually have a culture. When we cook something, so definitely share our the three neighbors, opposite neighbor, right side and left side. Always we share a plate, each other, always, all the time. But when I come here to Australia and uh, just wanted to f share the food, why are there are people not sharing food here? And I s ask for my, for my kids to go and uh, send some plate of food for my neighbors. My kids are ignored and no, mom, do we don't we don't we don't do this here. I said no, I can't. I, when I cook, smell goes to neighbor's house. I want to share. And at the first first two three times, I take a plate for the neighbors. Now my neighbors they know us. when I cook. I said oh, you, wait, what did you cook yesterday? You didn't share a plate. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I feel embarrassed when I'm not sharing food. Oh, usually I'm sharing, when I, I live in the last five years, I live in the cold. We have seven families in the cold, so usually sharing food with each other. They also, my opposite neighbor, have a lovely garden. They, she usually shares um, vegetables with me, and I always share food when I cook with them. It's very good, very interesting, and they find out there's a lovely culture, sharing each other food and friendship. This makes your friendship strong. And uh, I usually think, thought about back home, about the uh, friends, relatives back home. And uh, we finally made on 2014 to go back with my husband and my daughter because my mother-in-law was very sick and she wants to see my daughter because Yalda, my daughter, born here. So we decided to go maybe for a month. When I've been there back home, it was completely different for me. And I wasn't feeling comfortable. When I go out, uh, I, I used to go for the first two, three days with the, only just a scarf, go out, and then I come back home crying because the people not accepting you like this. So the situation is horrible, not good, especially for the women. And then I have to borrow my sister's hijab and put full hijab and cover my face. And I said for my husband, it's not the country I grew up. I don't want to stay anymore. I just want to go back, go back home. It's not my home now. <laughs> I feel very, very sad, especially for the women and children. Not good Medicare, health opportunities not good. For the kids, education is not good. So um, I thought, no, it's, it's, um, one person can, can't do anything, can't change a country. So it's better to go back. As, uh, yeah, when I come back here, I feel uh, Perth is my home. I'm trying to raise my children the way they have to be a good person and good for the country and help people. As you know, when you move in a new country, it's a little bit difficult to get used to people with the culture, the way you dress up, the way they walk and talk, the way they eat. It's a little bit difficult to get used to people. For me, was at the beginning when I came here, I had not enough English as well. It was a little bit difficult for me. So I find the food the only way to connect with the people and meet people, try to talk with them, try to share the food and have a chat. And uh, this way I find more friends and I learn more English. And I usually ask people when I talk in the street, in the shopping centers, and bus stops, everywhere. When I talk to them, I ask them, can you fix my English, please? Usually I ask people. Now as well, anytime I talk to the people, I ask them, if I have any mistake during the conversation, please stop, stop me and fix my English. This way I learn more. More than school, I learned more talking with the people, conversation. And this way, the food was the only way to connect with the people, talk with them, have a conversation, share the foods. And I learned more about the other different cultures, different foods from different countries. And I tried to learn their culture and uh, food as well.